Dylan Rounds. So this thing with this case, not gonna lie, I can understand just through channeling myself and then going back and looking at the notes and the case facts and stuff, I can see why psychics and investigators are getting frustrated with this case. Where he was living, Utah, Lucen, Utah. If you look on Google Maps, it's literally just fucking dirt. You'll have some like hills and mountains here and there, but essentially for miles and miles and miles, miles, it looks exactly the same. The part where the creek runs through looks exactly the same throughout the whole freaking state. So yeah. It's difficult, and what was getting on my nerves, and it's no one's fault, right? It's just the situation, was that I kept getting these details and these landmarks. But the problem again was it's Utah. There's a bajillion of those same landmarks everywhere. And yeah, this is difficult. But so I'm going to go over the case real quick for those who have no idea who Dylan Rounds is and what happened. And yeah, so essentially he was a 19 year old dude who, you know, wanted to go off and start his own farm. He had, you know, specific dreams of farming. He wanted to start his own farming business, farming lifestyle. That's how he grew up. So he was so into it. And yeah. So that's why he moved to Lucen, Utah. And, you know, many people were like, Utah, especially that area is not the best for farming because it's, you know, dry. But, you know, as he was, he was just like, I'ma do it. So no one was really gonna stop him. And so there was a camper on his property where he would stay while he worked. Um, there was a wooden shed slash barn. It looks really big to be a shed, but many people are calling it a sh calling it a grain shed. However, you know, it wasn't on his property, but he had per permission to use it from his neighbor, James Brennan. I'm going to start calling him JB because it's easier, but he was a squatter. So, I mean, permission kind of don't mean shit, especially if he was a squatter and it wasn't his to begin with but you know they got along for the most part and you know JB was like yeah you can you can use the grain shed so Dylan used it for his grain truck now here's the thing about JB JB had attempted murder charges from Maryland malicious shooting and convicted as a felon in possession of a firearm in February 2021, he was charged with aggravated assault with a lawn chair. Now, while living near Dillon, there was an active warrant for his arrest. So, May 27th, 2022, Dillon's planting his seeds. The morning of May 28th, 2022, he spoke to his grandmother on the phone but it started to rain, so he had to move his grain truck into that shed. But unfortunately, that was the last contact that anyone had with him. So May 30th, 2022, he was reported missing. Police started their investigation. Family and police searched around his property and eventually found a pair of his boots behind a pile of dirt, and one of the boots had blood stains on them. Now, Dylan's pickup truck was also there in front of his camper. However, it was locked, which was not normal for Dylan. He never locked his truck. And because it was locked, his father broke the window to gain access to his truck, but they didn't find anything. And there was nothing useful found in his camper. 
in June during a search party. His pistol was found on his bathroom counter with its magazine next to it, which was not there during the initial search. So, WTF, right? The next day, the key fob to his truck was found in the same place in the bathroom. However, there were no fingerprints found on the pistol or the key fob. On June 2nd, family caught JB cleaning out the shed and putting garbage bags into a truck, which was unusual because that shed has always been full of garbage and Dylan never ever cleaned it. So the question was, why was JB suddenly cleaning his shed at that exact moment when that shit's never been clean. Made no sense, right? Eight days later, police learned about the warrant for JB. Why did it take so long to learn about his warrant, first of all? Is my question. June 11th, JB was arrested. June 12th, JB was released by his own recognizance and returned to his career as a squatter. Why? June 16th, the police did search the shed near JB's trailer and found items related to muzzle-loading firearms including ball ammunition, caps, black powder, and speed loaders. Items were not seized, just photographed. First of all, what the fuck? He has a warrant on him, okay? And he's, he's a convicted felon, okay? who's not allowed to be in possession of firearms, why did they leave them there? Please explain to me why they left those there. June 20th, neighbor of JB told police that on June 7th, James brought three black powder guns to his residence and asked him to keep them safe. Neighbor asked why, as you would. JB said he needed them to be put somewhere safe because he had issues with law enforcement. They had a pattern of taking his guns. Gee, I wonder why. Next day, the neighbor said that JB left a Winchester Model 69 22 caliber bolt action rifle. And then police seized the muzzle loading guns. First of all, second of all, first of all, how's he getting these guns? if he's got a warrant for his arrest. Okay. Second of all, why did they just leave the other... I, okay, you know what? Moving on. JB was arrested for felon in possession of a firearm. The only thing I can think of is the muzzle loading, like... Like a ball... Like a musket. Like, those are the ones you can put the ammo in through the front and... You know what I mean. Maybe they don't consider them as firearms or guns, and that's why they left them there? I don't know. All I know is that's just freaking weird. But yeah, rested in possession of firearm, which, you know, he's a felon, so he's not allowed to have that. March 3rd, 2023, JB's charged with aggravated murder, abuse, and desecration of a human body, and connection to the death of Dylan Rounds. Now, the police pretty much already knew he did it. The only issue is they don't know where he hid the body. Now, let's... And people, you know, there are some people accusing some of the family members, which is not fucking cool, first of all. Second of all, there's all this evidence against JB because, I'm sorry, he's a dumbass. And, yeah, he's a dumbass. So the first thing against him was Dylan lived out in the middle of nowhere. The only person around was JB. Number two, JB had an extensive criminal history and background. Dylan's disappearance was out of character and he never exhibited any like characteristics of being depressed, wanting to run away, like anything like that. He essentially just wanted to live his farmer dreams. Not long after Dylan's disappearance, JB was caught moving the black trash bags from the shed and putting them into his truck. And like I said earlier, Dylan never cleaned that shed. 
So why did JB feel like he had to do that? Dylan's cell phone stopped operating not long after speaking to his grandmother on the day he disappeared on May 28, 2022. And the cell phone was last active by a pond that was not far from the trailer where JB lived. Police searched the pond and did find the cell phone eventually. The cell phone indicates he was near JB the day he disappeared. When the struggle went on and, you know, things happened, Dum Dum accidentally recorded himself in a time lapse. And, uh, yeah. And in that video, it featured JB cleaning a firearm with bloodstains on his arms and on his shirt. Police found the shirt that JB was wearing and discovered it had Dylan's DNA on it. According to the neighbor JB tried to use to hide the muzzle-loading firearms, um, which, you know, the police did find in the trailer where JB lived. So, yeah. So, according to the neighbor, you know, JB tried to use him to hide his firearms, so the police didn't take it. And the day police discovered Dylan's boots, the DNA came back, and it found not only was Dylan's DNA on those boots, but so was JB's. And JB was caught lying to the police. So, without a doubt, JB is guilty. But the question is, where did he hide the body? Ugh. So, again, I channeled... And I'm gonna try to show you what I channeled. I'll just put the um, the notes up here instead of just holding them up because then it's easier to see. But there are questions I had. And during the initial channel, the one before I even knew what the whole case was about, one of the things that popped up was the GPS. Did anyone look at the GPS? Look at the GPS in his truck. And, um, here's another question. Unless JB says where the body is, I think it's going to be very hard to find the body. So then you got to start asking other questions. How was the body moved? If you can figure out how the body was moved, maybe you can figure out where it is. And why do I say that? Well, did he use his truck? Did he use his car? It's a little weird that JB was in possession with uh, his key fob. So I'm wondering if he used his truck to transport the body. And if that is the case and he cleaned out his truck really well. There's a GPS thing in the truck that could probably tell you where it's been. But um, if they didn't use the truck, maybe he used the car. He had to have done something. A full-size man is not easy to just carry and drag and put somewhere, alright, unless you have help with some kind of tool, okay? But yeah, let's go to my initial channeling here. And boy, do I have quite a few pages of notes. So, okay. At first, I was getting, like, what I felt, like how he was murdered, and I feel like he was shot. I also feel like he had other wounds from other things, like being hit in the head. Something happened to his head, because since I was adamant of channeling this case, I've had a headache ever since. So something happened to his head, for sure. Whether he got shot or hit, something in the head. I also was feeling chest pains and throat like burning. I felt feet aching, like jaw pain. There had to have been some kind of struggle first. Had to be. Or, you know, he tried to fight or run, but he couldn't run. Yeah. I was seeing trains, like a train track and trains and, tra and mine shafts. And this is even before I knew what state we were in, okay? 
But so, I feel like the train tracks are important. The mine is important. And I drew this bird, and at first I thought it was just a bird. But then, when I started looking at the map, there's a place called Bald Eagle Mountain. And does this not look like a bald eagle? I think it does. Could that be a clue? Could, about, could I be interpreting it not right? It's possible. I kept drawing buildings and I know now that it had to do with like the buildings on the property. And I was seeing, you know, Dylan for what he looked like, but I also kept getting like saturated ground like it was wet and water and frogs. I drew a frog and I'm like, okay, well maybe he's near a creek. Ooh, my head is hurting again and I'm feeling dizzy. And uh, he was wearing a hat. He liked wearing his hat. I heard Hill. And it looked muddy. It looked wet. And then I got a Japanese symbol. I don't know Japanese. Okay? I, I, I don't know kanji. I got the kana. I don't know any of that shit. I drew it. And then I had to text my friend who is very fluent in Japanese because she lived there for 10 years. So I was like, hey, this is a symbol. I know it, but what does it mean? She told me it means tree or wood. Well, I kept seeing a tree. So, maybe there's a tree within the vicinity. And the other issue I kept finding or running into was he was killed and then his body was moved. So, is he showing me where he was killed, or is he showing me where he was moved? So, my hands started to itch and throb, kind of like when you dig, or you use your hands, and they're just like, not used to it, like when you overwork. I've had this sensation when digging, or shoveling snow, dirt, mulch, um, using my bat, you know, in a batting cage. So that tells me that there was digging. But the question is, was it me feeling it from Dylan? Or was it me feeling it from JB? Did JB dig and put his body in the ground? I kept seeing these other symbols and I'm like, what the frick is this? I had to look them up to see if I could find anything. The closest I could find was to heaven, to heaven, earth is hell, and that is a Netherlands-based band of metalcore, deathcore, hardcore, whatever. But I, I didn't feel that was quite right. But you know what else it looked like? Power lines. And when I was getting images, I kept seeing a power line. And could that also be the wood? I don't know. But that would be weird. That JB would put him near a power line. However, we know JB's not very smart. Alright. Um, the second symbol kind of looks like Three of Swords. Which, when I see the Three of Swords, I think betrayal. Okay. Kept seeing the dilapidated wooden structure that looks like the Shack or the Shed. I think JB brought his body there momentarily, but I don't think it's still there. Train. I got another train. I started getting pain in my left cheek. Well, technically this side, and then my jaw. I kept seeing this, like, the circle thing with other circles in it. So then I was like, is this a tree? Is this tree rings? Maybe. Chest pains. I did see that his body's laying this way. Um, they kept showing me the flat, you know, land. Dust bowl, like, for miles. Again, power lines. Then I kept seeing this man standing up on something. And then it would drop down. And then it would be like this... I don't know what you want to call it. Ravine, hole, 
I'm not quite sure. But I see the man there throwing stuff over. And just keeps throwing stuff over. And it's like he's trying to cover something up. So then I drew this thing. Again, it's like... You have the land, and then it goes like this. Almost like a hole. But then there's water, there's a rock, and there's a tree. And, you know, here is the image of it. But it's like there's a cutout in the ground, and he's in it. But it's near water again. And that would explain the frogs I kept seeing. So, like... I don't know if it's like a puddle, a place that gathers water. Some people call it washes, some people call it like runoff, some people call it puddles. It's something that can hold water and the ground is saturated, but it's not like, I don't know if it's part of the creek or like when it rains it just collects there or if the creek overflows it collects there, but when it rains it collects there and is saturated for a while and or stays that way but I mean I don't know how else to describe it the trees f looks fucking dead in my vision I mean I don't know it just collects water from somehow somehow whether it's the creek or rain or just like I don't know water's there and like in this, it's like there's a cutout, and part of it has to do with like weathering of the, um, or I should say erosion of the land from like the wind, from water, and it being dry, it like kind of crumbles up. Like there's pockets that are formed, and I feel like he could be in something like this. Like I said, I feel like JB's lazy and dumb. Like, he didn't even clean the boots off. I don't know. Maybe he was drunk when he did it and just wasn't fully there to think. But I feel like it's somewhere that wasn't too hard for him to get to and didn't require too much effort. That's why part of me feels like it's closer than it seems. But again, the Bald Eagle thing is like, okay, could it just be in the direction of Bald Eagle Mountain? In that direction? That's what's frustrating. It could... <sighs> Typically, people who kill others tend to do it within a mile or so of the location, either like where they live or the location in which the person was killed, but that's why I'm just like, can you really profile him like everyone else? Especially like, if you have variables such as alcohol that might be involved, I just feel like it's... It might be in plain... I don't want to say it's in plain sight, but I feel like it's somewhere where people have already been and just didn't see him. But... We won't know until he's found. But... Here's the thing. I'm not the only medium who has described a similar location See, I had a note that says like okay so here's some commonalities between what I've seen and what other mediums seen near or around water or saturated ground a boulder wooden building or shed tree ground and is covered and close or around property line like I said this is a bitch kind of case because everything looks the same I went on Google Maps, and so there are a few places where I think he could be, but here's the thing with these cases, and this is something that I learned from the Psychic Sleuth, because 
this is more of her specialty. Specialty. This is what she does. But I learned that you, as a medium, could find the location and be exactly right. But if it's not time for that person to be found, they're not going to be found. And that's the sad part. And that's the frustrating part. Because someone could have been right and they just walked past the body. And it's kind of like part of their soul contract. It's like there is a date in which they are supposed to be found. And one of the things that I kept hearing was Dylan's going to be found soon. And I was getting like 2024, like within this year. I could be wrong. Right? I could have misinterpreted it, but I kept hearing Dylan found, Dylan found, Dylan found. He's going to be found. He's going to be found. It's just a matter of when. And he's definitely meant to be found. But again, it's like, this is why this case is so difficult. It's not like when I was looking for that missing, missing Amish girl. Like, that was easy. I don't know why it was so easy to find her for me. Of course, you know, the police missed it a few times. But eventually they found her pretty much where I said she was. Um, but this, this one's harder because for miles and miles and miles and miles, it's just dirt. And for miles and miles and miles, you have a creek that runs literally from his state down pretty much into Nevada. And that's why it's really difficult. And I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, I'm gonna find him, blah 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 blah. It would be great if I did. But I feel like I don't think I'm going to be the one to find him. However, I do think someone else will. And I'm okay knowing that. I I'm not perfect. I'm not the perfect medium. And I know there are g there's going to be some things that I'm not going to be able to do. And I'm fine admitting that. Some locations of interest. So, I'll show you here the map, but I just find it weird that I drew a bald eagle and there's a mountain called Bald Eagle Mountain and I drew a mine and there's like water so it's more likely a creek train tracks, tree and a boulder I feel like all of those are gonna be in that vicinity of where his body is As t in terms of Bald Eagle Mountain, if I'm going to cr like profile JB, I think he's kind of lazy and I think he's kind of dumb. But I think if and if I could go down, if I was financially secure enough, I would go fly down myself. I would, and I would just start looking. Take Ghost with me. He's good at finding things. Get a dirt bike, put Ghost next to me, give him a little helmet, and we'll go riding through Utah and we'll go find him. If anyone wants to sponsor me for that, I'll fucking do it. Like, I'll do it. I don't give a shit. We'll go. Take Goosey with me. I'll go. But yeah, guys. This is difficult. <laughs>